Hello, my name is Jacqueline Lowe, and I am the founder of Grace That Reigns. Grace That Reigns is a faith-filled healing retreat ministry, and we focus our attention on helping people to renew their sense of wonder for themselves, as well as with their ongoing relationship with the Lord. You know, for me, I want to tell you that I didn't expect, not in a million years, that I would be involved in a religious Catholic ministry. And you know why? Because for me, I derived my sense of identity and purpose from the professional work that I was involved in. I'd studied landscape architecture at the University of British Columbia, and it was my second degree. And the world of architecture was everything that I wanted. It gave me a sense of joy, and it gave me a sense of purpose. I loved the work that I was doing. It gave me opportunities to travel, and I worked in places like Europe and Asia and parts of the U.S. on amazing projects with very talented people. So this was my dream, and I saw my future in the design world. But on September 23, 1998, I experienced an extremely powerful presence of the Lord that lasted for three days and three nights. And during those days and nights, I was introduced to another world where God presented himself to me and whispered words of his love, his presence, and his mysteries. I received them in words and in images. And what he was asking me was this. Could you help me to bring healing to this world? More directly, can you bring healing to my people? At that moment, friends, I thought I was hallucinating because God doesn't do this. God doesn't talk to people like this. He only did this in the Bible. In fact, my thought was, this should not be even happening to me because I wasn't even then practicing my faith. In fact, I didn't really know much about my faith. This was a mistake. Right after the experience, I was totally in shock and I realized that life for me had changed. It would never be the same again. Because God had spoken to me because God had given me a kind of directive, and I heard him in my mind, in my spirit, and in my heart. And now, while all of this was happening, I was thinking of something else. And now I want to share that with you. I want to let you know why I was so not enthused by this message. And it was because of this. I so did not respect any of the charismatic prayer warriors, healers, they call themselves, because I thought that they were fakes and I thought they were just trying to con people out of their money. And so spiritual healers in this way were kind of at the bottom of the barrel for me. Obviously, thank God I had time to heal from these notions. So because I received this gift this way and I didn't respect it, I never talked about it. Was this healing real? Was this a real gift? You know, I received the answer soon enough. My father took seriously ill about three months after this God experience, and he found himself in an emergency room where he was about to face major surgery. And of course, my mom said, could you please pray for your dad? And I replied, yes, sure. And so I began to pray. And I remember the words that came out of my mouth that said, do you believe that you'll be healed? And my dad said, yes. And so I replied, your faith has healed you. Friends, those words did not come out of my mouth. They were not my words. Obviously, they came from the Holy Spirit. The next morning, the doctor came in and took an x-ray of my dad's stomach because they knew that was the part that they had to operate on. But in doing so and checking it again, they found out that the contents of his stomach looked completely healthy. They could not find the growth that they were looking for. As a result, they wrote on the chart that this case was inexplicable. So what could they do? They sent my dad home again. The thing was, though, was that my dad had received complete physical healing. Sure, I was amazed. I was amazed because I actually had a part in it. And maybe those events that happened just a few months ago when the Lord came into my life was real. So I thought, maybe there's something to this. You know, I was young, I was naive, and I was searching. And yeah, of course, I loved my architecture and the work that I did. However, what new avenue was this? So I looked earnestly for a director. And I found one just across the border in Seattle. 
and he recommended me to a number of priests and people who needed prayer. Of course, I was now testing the superpower gift. Anyway, some of these people were suffering from cancer, and others were suffering from different kinds of illnesses. And so I said, sure, I'll do it. I went over there, prayed for them, and they were healed too. And I thought, ooh, wow, this is really quite amazing. So the next years that followed after this was really fun. This journey was a whole new journey that I'd never been on before. I was invited to different parts of the world to pray for people. And that was it. It was quite an adventure because it brought me to places like Jakarta, Indonesia, Bali, Hawaii, Southern California, Washington, D.C. I was traveling more to these amazing places. So why would I want to stop? Especially because I saw great miracles happen before my eyes. And I knew that it was all about God because I was just his hands and feet. Sometimes I felt like an imposter because I wasn't really doing the work. But after a while, I realized that it really was not easy. Because it was so intense, I had to make a decision. Do I continue to help people with this newfound gift of healing? Or do I continue on to advance my professional career? One of my first clients whom I traveled to near Washington, D.C., who suffered from a cancerous tumor in her brain, helped me to sort that decision. She said, Jacqueline, there are many architects in this world. You've got a special kind of gift and a down-to-earth way of praying with people. Why don't you be the Lord's architect and build up his kingdom? Well, that was it. I decided to rise to the occasion. And in 2008, my sister and I, Juliana, we sat in the basement with a glass of wine in our hands and gave the ministry its official name, Grace That Reigns. And then came the dark days. The honeymoon was over. I discovered that praying for people was hard and I had to be empathetic. And you know, I wasn't really an empathetic person. I never really dealt with sick people in my life. People who were asking for help, people who were suffering. So that was hard for me, emotionally exhausting at times. I always felt like I was a step behind because I wasn't given a roadmap. I didn't know what was gonna come next. I didn't have a great faith. I didn't have a degree in theology. I didn't even know how to start up a startup. And this was a nonprofit, religious-based startup. Much more challenging than most. This time in my life was pretty distressing. And I say this because I received a lot of rejection from people, a lot of misunderstanding, jealousies, and envies. This was a blow for me because I never asked for this specific gift, nor for this role. So I felt really alone. I didn't know who to talk to. And many times in my loneliness, I sat on the church pew and angrily told the Lord, you've picked the wrong person. I can't do this for you. Leave me alone. In fact, I quit. The thing about telling God that you want to quit is that sometimes he just doesn't listen. In fact, God kept dangling carrots in front of my face. People came back with comments such as, boy, you were so kind. Thank you for helping me. Or, thank you for giving me that sense of peace. Or, hey, I received a healing. Could you come? Could you help me to pray for somebody else? Or, hey, you really encouraged me. These testimonies, little by little, one by one, kept me going one tiny step at a time. Finally, in 2012, I had a victory. We actually received charitable status in the province of British Columbia, and it was also recognized by the federal government of Canada. Furthermore, we also received a blessing from the Archbishop of the Vancouver Diocese. That allowed me to accept invitations to give parish retreats. And that was good because I was getting over my stage fright and becoming more confident in this role. And the people who I had made friends with, the people who I had prayed for, some of them were who had attended my retreats, were beginning to recognize that this ministry had teeth. And it really wasn't about me, but it was really about the healing of the church as a whole. So now we had about eight or nine people who gathered together to form a group called Grace That Reigns. But that was not all. Bishop Ronald Gilmore, who retired a year ago from the Diocese of Dodge City, Kansas, joined us, acting as our spiritual director as well as my ministry partner. And from afar, Dr. Jerry Dorn gave his wisdom and advice. Bishop Gilmore's presence helped us to expand our ministry out into the United States, where we minister to over 5,000 people in rural and urban churches, as well as individuals. Over the years, we have evolved 
into a very powerful prayer and healing ministry. So if you're looking for a holy, authentic, down-to-earth, humble and sincere retreat experience, please contact us. We offer spiritual direction. We also offer online retreats. It's only taken me 22 years to get to this point. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my story. If you're curious to find out how else we can help you, please write me at Jacqueline at gracethatreigns.com or visit our website at www.gracethatreigns.com. Thank you.